Barakatay Yahawa, Barakatay Yahawa Shai, Kohalayim La Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Baracha Kodash, which means all praises to Yahawa is the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham is in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, who the world only called Jesus Christ, Baracha Kodash, means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, only way we can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers, preaching the gospel and truth and the sincerity of and charity. So, Brother Matathia from the Great Millstone Camden Branch on Des Moines. And um, not sure what I'm entitled this lesson just yet, but it's going along the lines of uh, being blameless, right? So now when we go into uh, just a regular dictionary, you know, just a regular Google uh, blameless definition, and you go into it, it says innocent of wrongdoing. When you go into the synonyms, innocent, guiltless, above, uh, above, above reproach, above suspicion, irreproachable, unimpeachable in the clear faultless perfect virtuous pure moral upright <laughs> unblemished spotless right and these are all things that the um the scriptures tell us to be right and we have to be this to the best of our ability let's get um let's get uh what it says uh let's get spotless Let's get blemish. Just like when we go into the law, our offerings had to be without spot or without blemish. <laughs> you know, and it's the same thing. And uh, 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 the sacrifices we're we're making spiritually, man. You know, this is um. Yep, this is Ephesians five. And 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Going back to those different definitions of pure, right? Faultless. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. When you go into that word blemish, you know, morally without blemish, faultless, unblameable, which goes back into what? being blameless man you know let's see it's colossians 1 and 20 and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him i say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, man. You see, so walking in his word keeps us what without blemish. It keeps us blameless, man. And that's why the scriptures tell us to have our conversation. Let's get that. This is the book of uh, 1 Peter 2 and 11. It says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, meaning among the unbelievers, Right. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify the most high. In the day of visitation, man, you see. So to the point where nobody should be able to say anything ill against us, man. You know, because this word have have renewed us in the spirit. So therefore, we, we walk properly according to the spirit, as the scripture says, let's grab this. Right. It says this is the book of Second uh, Corinthians six and three. It says. Um, I started one. It says we then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of the most high in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation have I succured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 
giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of the heavenly father in much patience in much afflictions in necessities in distresses in stripes and imprisonments and tumults and labors and watchings and fastings by pureness, blameless, right? By knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth. By the power of the Heavenly Father, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. So no matter what we're going through or what we're suffering, we should embody this word, man. Right? Continue to be blameless like the scriptures tell us. Matter of fact, let's see. What was it blemish? So I've seen one pop up. Um... Yep, that's a good one. Okay, from there, let's get to Philippians. Philippians 2 and um, verse 12. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as, in, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, man. So that means when you, when, you by yourself or you around a bunch of unbelievers, are you still conducting yourself according to the scriptures? Right. Just because you're not around a brother, just because you're not around a, a, a fellow uh, a, a person who believes that they're Israelite. Right. I'll put it that way, you know, because I was going to say just because you're not around another Israelite. But yeah, I'm going to put it that way, man, because all Israel is not Israel. Two thirds of our people, the people who don't believe they're not counted as Israelites on this side, man. So how are so how are you conducting yourself amongst them? Right. The scripture says defraud not one another, but yet you defrauding a, a, a guy that's still in the world. No, man, you know, the law, you see, just because he uh, don't believe he's an Israelite, he still is an Israelite. So you still conduct yourself uh, with him as if he's an Israelite, man. You won't wrong him. You won't steal from him, you know. You won't. Uh, 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 you you gonna keep the uh, 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 the laws. You gonna continue to conduct yourself, man, accordingly, right? Give your word, right? You still still uh, 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 strive to keep your word to the best of your ability. Just because it's not a brother in the faith, don't mean that you can just fuck off and be like, nah. No, you still a man of integrity, man. You see, in the people in the world, they see these traits within us, man. Just like it says in the book of, uh, I believe it's first Peter, the third chapter, it speaks about how an unbelieving husband can be won by the conversation of the believing wife, man, by the conduct of the believing woman. Well, it's the same thing applies with us, right? We might have certain family members or we might have certain friends or guys we knew or, or co-workers that we work with, man, and they see the change within our lives, man. Hey, that can motivate them. You see, they can be won by just off our conduct, man. So being blameless, not only when you when we are amongst each other, but when we out in the world, man. And, and Paul going to explain this, right? Verse 13, for it is the heavenly father which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. And when you go into that without murmurings, man, a murmur, a secret debate, a secret displeasure, not openly avowed, man, you see. You got guys that uh, 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 think ill in their mind and have uh, uh, oughts and, and have disagreements all in your head. Man, the scripture says do things without murmurings, man. You know, if you disagree with something that's going on within the camp, man, they will open your mouth. You could simply ask a question. Hey, brother, well, this is that, that is that, that is that. Instead of allowing demons to fester within your spirit, man, you see. It says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. The thinking of a man deliberating with himself and inward thought, right? So he thinking in his head, man, this, this nigga ain't right. And this ain't that. And this ain't that. And that's wrong. And no, man. It says, do all things without that. You know, you got a question about something. You know, brothers ain't overbearing. They ask a brother a question. Hey, brother, why did you say, whoop, 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 or brother, why are we moving like this? And, you know. Hey, because according to the scriptures, you know, according to the vibration, according to the reason and according to my experience, and it'll be explained unto you. Right. Verse 15. This is the point, though, that ye may be blameless and harmless. 
the sun, let's get that word harmless. Unmixed, pure as in wine or metals, man. <laughs> you know, that we went, going back to that definition, you see, it speaks about what? Virtuous, perfect, pure, moral, you know. So what, man? Being those, uh, 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 that hundred percent pure gold, right? Like the scripture says, uh, uh, in a great house, there are gold, silver, and precious stones, right? Being unmixed. You see, it says of mine without a mixture of evil, free from guile, innocent. And we're free from guile through our Lord. Yahweh Shai, as is written in Psalms, uh, the 32nd chapter it says, blessed is the man whose sins are not imputed unto him. Right. And our sins are not imputed unto us as long as we walk in Yahweh Shah. Let's get this in the book of first John. This is how we uh, remain blameless. This is uh, the book of first John. Three. And five, it says, and we know that he being Yahweh Shah was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. So in Yahweh Shah, there is no sin. What it says in um, John 15. This is the book of uh, St. John 15. And I started to stop. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Meaning what? Uh, you prune it. You know, if you don't know what pruning is, just, just look up what pruning is, man. You see? And that's what? The purge, uh, the different trials, tribulations, the fire that we go through, right? Verse 3. Now ye are clean. Through the word which I have spoken unto you, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. You see? So going back, we have to abide in Yahweh Shah because in him there is no sin. So we have to walk in. In his spirit, we have to have the mind of him. He come in the volume of the book, put on a whole armor of the scriptures, right? Let's keep reading. Verse six, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth had not seen him, neither known him, you know? So as long as we abide in Yahweh Shai, our sins are not imputed unto us. You see? And that's striving and, and walking according to the spirit to the best of our ability. So let's go back to Philippians 2 and 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless. The sons of the heavenly father without rebuke. Wasn't that one of the blameless and uh, irreproachable? Right. That was one of the definitions. It says without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. man. So we should be represent uh, representatives of the gospel of the light. According to John, the first chapter, Yahweh Shai is that light. And we're a part of his body, so we have the light within him. You see? Verse 16, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Yahweh Shai, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. You know? So let's end it on this, uh, on this Peter, unless the Spirit give me anything else. This is the book of, um, First Peter 1 and 15. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, in all manner of behavior, manner of life and conduct. You see, not just when you with the brothers, not just when you on the line, but in your in your all manner of life. man. Verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. And if ye call on a father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers, right? But with precious blood of Hamashiach as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So Yahweh Shah is that unblemished lamb. Yahweh Shah is that. A lamb without spot. And as long as we abide in him, we're that uh, uh, unblemished sacrifice. You know, we're that uh, um, uh, that lamb without spot as well, man. Our, our sacrifice has been accepted through our Lord Yahweh Shai, you know, and that's why the scriptures tell us. Let's get this.
This is Colossians 4 and 5. It says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. What it means when them that are without? Them that's uh, 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 without the temple, man. Those that don't believe, right? You walk with wisdom according uh, uh, with them too. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Going back into the law, every offering, every sacrifice had to be salted with salt. So we have to, and the salt is representation of this wisdom. So we got to have this word within us in order for our sacrifice to be accepted, in order for us to be blameless, to be without blemish, you know. And that's going back into what, man? How people uh, uh, see us and view us. See, uh, going back to Yahweh Shah, they didn't have nothing against Yahweh Shah, man. They had to bring false witnesses. They had to bring false accusations against our Lord Yahweh Shah. And it should be the same thing with us, man. It should be the same thing with us, you know. What did uh, what did Samuel say? Let me grab this. This is the book of uh, First Samuel. Twelve, I believe. This is First Samuel. Twelve. And three, it says, behold, here am I witness against me before Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah and before his anointed whose ox have I taken or whose ass have I have I taken or whom have I defrauded whom have I oppressed or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind my eyes therewith and I will restore it you. And they said, thou has not defrauded us nor oppressed us, neither has thou taken aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that ye have found that ye have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, He is witness, man. It's the same thing with us, man. Being blameless, man. You know? Being blameless, right? Even the man Zacchaeus. Let's grab this. This is um Luke 19 and 5. It says, and when Yahweh came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said, meaning uh, because he climbed in a tree. When you read the totality of it, you know, he was a, a man of little stature, meaning he was short. So he climbed, he climbed into a tree to see Yahweh It says, Yahweh looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Right. Meaning what? His past conversation. But Zacchaeus, through the spirit, believed in Yahweh Shah and what? He became that new creature. Let's keep reading verse eight. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Yahweh said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. You see? So he told him salvation came into his house because of what? The mindset that he took. He gave half his goods to the poor and he said, Look, if I wronged anybody, man, I'll restore it. Going back to the uh, the book of Ezekiel where it says, If the wicked restored a pledge, right? That ain't talking about Esau, Edom. Ain't talking about no heathen. That's talking about a fellow Israelite, man. You know, so this is the mindset we should have within this walk of ours, man, being blameless in all aspects of our life. You know, let's end it on this. This is the book of um, first Maccabees. Two. And um, now when you read this, this is Matthias going down and um, pretty much just going into the different acts of our forefathers and how the Lord was there with them. And we're going to focus on verse 60. It's 1 Maccabees 2 and 60. It says, Daniel, for his innocency, because he was blameless, right? Because he walked in the ways of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot to the best of his ability during that time, just, just Yahweh. But, you know, now in today's time, Yahweh is manifested, right? So we, he walking in the ways of the Lord to the best of his ability, right? Was delivered from the mouth of lions, man. So because Daniel was blameless, because of his innocency through the spirit, right? He was delivered from a uh, 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 from calamity, and it's going to be the same thing as us, man. As long as we continue to walk in the integrity of the scriptures, man, whether we're around brothers or whether we not, work out our own salvation in fear and trembling. 
you know. So Lord willing, I hope this was edifying to Wadi Yahawa, Bahasham Yahweh for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, glory to Yahawa, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baruch Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth in the sincerity, always in charity. Shalom.